Hey, I'm Harold Sports Writer Manny Navarro. And I'm Andre Fernandez. And we're here in Stink Town filming the Gridiron Report. All right, Dre, week three is in the books. This team right here from Miami High, 3 0. Great start. They crushed Miami Beach last week, 49-7. Yeah, I mean, I picked the Stings to win. I didn't think they were going to win by that much. I mean, but that was impressive. Their running game was tremendous. I think they ran for almost 400 yards on the ground, stuck to their game plan, opened up and got a huge district win over Miami Beach, a team that many thought would still be kind of like the third best team in the district behind the powerhouses of Gables and Columbus. But this is a big, game, a big win for them because this program's been down in football. It's starting to make, you know, take the steps to get back to what it once was. And we'll see how far they can go. I mean, 3-0 and is a good start for this team. All right, Columbus, who uh, Dre just brought up, one of the teams in the district. They were undefeated until they went up to Travis Powell last week and played Miami Central, got absolutely pummeled in that game. Yeah, I mean, they, they never really had a chance. Central, first play of the game, Cedric Miller busts a touchdown run. It steamrolled from there. They got nothing done on offense. It was a running clock by halftime. And it just shows you, Central, if it weren't for the Booker T loss, this team would still be in national title contention right now. And it shows you the gap between them and pretty much everybody else around town. Miami High will be taking on Southwest this week. Southwest, you thought they were going to win the yeah. district, and they end up losing a big one, blowing a 17-point lead at Belen. Yeah, now they need some help if they want to get back into that. I mean, they could still be a playoff team, and uh, but credit to Belen. They were down 17-0. They're tough to play at home, especially there in the afternoon in that heat. They put things together, came back from 17-0 down, 24 unanswered, beat a very athletic, very good Eagles team that's been dominating that district for the past two years and the Wolverines now they're in the driver's seat. So. Great job Rich Stewart one of the legends down here in South Florida. Jackson Booker T our number one team Booker T Washington 7-7 and then all of a sudden it was an avalanche. Yeah I mean you can't take anything from when you play Booker T I think if you're a Dade County team now unless your name is Central you have no chance it seems but Jackson will have a good season I keep saying it they'll get to a point in their schedule where they'll start getting some victories and we'll see what they can do in their district but Booker T I mean it's the, one, it's the only team left that can win a national title. <laughs> Did it last year. Let's see if they can repeat, if they keep it going. Flanagan goes down to Cypress Bay. You were down there for this game. Close for a little bit, and then Flanagan really showed its power. Yeah, they did. I mean, a sloppy start for the Falcons, but I think in the end, one thing that looked impressive was their defense. They call themselves the Dirty Birds down there because they're <laughs> the Falcons. Devin Bush has got things rolling pretty well down there. He was animated throughout the whole game. You can tell how proud he is of this program, how far it's come. And they've, got a, they've still got a ways to go, and I think they have a lot to show us as the season goes on, impressive win over a well-coached Cypress Bay team. Saturday night, St. Thomas Aquinas, Miramar, they hook up for a big game. You were there for that as well. Yeah, I mean, we never see St. Thomas in must-win mode, but that was one right there. They had to have that game. One and two, you could have had some, some real issues there with the Raiders at that point, but they got it done. Their defense, they blocked two, no, special teams blocked two kicks late in the game that led the points, and they pull out this huge win over Miramar, and now I wouldn't be surprised. The schedule softens up a bit. Now you can see Aquinas go on a pretty big roll, as we expected them to early on. And for Miramar, tough schedule so far. Two and two, they're not out of it. They're going to hit the district play now, and I think the Patriots will be all right. We hit Miami high today. I think we might have to hit Miami Northwestern pretty soon because yeah. they come through with a big win. I think a game that I called, if we go back to the tape from last week. Why don't you bring up the other five that, uh, you know, the other five I, games we've picked. Not, I, not just I the got, one you I get. Got, he always I got does that. that. One right. The, the one he gets right. I got to bring it up. All Bulls, right. uh, big win over the Chiefs. No, big win definitely. And coach, you know, Eddie Brown and those guys are doing a good job trying to restore. Very similar to the situation here there in the sense that they're trying to restore what they once had. The Bulls were a team that we always used to talk about as state title contenders, national title contenders. They still have a ways to go to get to that, but they're starting to make strides. You saw it last week. Big win over Carroll City, and now the playoffs could be coming if they just stay on track and keep winning their key games. Chiefs are winless. I can't believe it. All right, that wraps it up for Rewinds. We'll be back 